Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look in on my three red wiggler bins. Now, one of the good things about doing all three of these bins all at the same time is you get to see exactly the same bin with the exact same amount of worms, red wigglers, over different stages of progress. So this has been one that was recently refreshed. We're still doing a bit of a migration here. And that is well over 270 days old. So this portion is 258 days old. And then, of course, this was started 25 days ago. The other bins, bin number two, is 228 days, and I think we're going to start the migration today. Bin number three is what we want to call middle-aged at about 118 days and is still in process. So, as I said, there's about a pound to a pound and a half of red wigglers in here. These bins are 22 inches by 15 inches by 6 inches deep. All right, so what we did last time was we put all this brand new bedding in here and fed it, then on this side we just mounded everything up in hopes that things would move over that away. So let's start with the part we want to migrate. Still seeing a lot of cocoons here, probably very close to getting uh, hatched. So I'm going to put them over on this side when I find them. So just kind of looking through here, looks like peach pits, cherry pits. We'll move any of the food that we find over to this side. But I'm not really seeing uh, that the worms have completely moved out. I mean, this guy, he's still there. So let's kind of keep digging here, seeing if we can get any food or grab worms to move over. I'm not going to sit here and pick out all of them. But uh, as I'm picking through, I might as well, right? Keep picking out these cherry pits. Look in the bottom, see what I've got. Still got quite a few worms. There should not be any food, because we did not feed on this side last time. So anything that resembles food, I'm just going to move on over. But this is pretty wet, so I think I'm going to start leaving the lids off of these guys they do not need to get any wetter. All right, well, there's no food over there, so we're just going to keep that piled up over here so that when we look at the other side, we're not mixing old stuff in with new. So let's go over to this side and see what we've got. Now this was started with the prepared bedding and uh, some food. So you can tell they are already making some castings over here. This side did not have any castings from before, just, uh, just bedding. So I think they're doing a very good job. So let's keep turning until we find the food and see what kind of population we've managed to encourage over here. I did look at the video last time and we did add some citrus. So you can see we've got a little bit of a worm ball here. Inside, uh, I don't know if that's a grapefruit or you know what, but they're inside of it. And let's see what else we find. Let's see the uh, mango seed is, somebody's even laid one of their cocoons in there. I guess that cl claims it for those worms if they put their children in there. So keep digging here. I think there was also some avocado in with these oranges, but I'm not really seeing it. Not yet. I am smelling the orange, but I'm not seeing any goo that would indicate the flesh of an avocado at this point. But it looks like a fair number of the worms are moving over, so that's great. Another little bit of a worm ball here in something. So that's good. They are, they are making it over. Um, as I said before, I, I used to just do the light separation and move everybody over in mass, but now that I have so many bins, which I, I do believe is probably upwards of 20, um, 23, 24, something like that, 
so I don't have time to uh, light migrate all of them. So these guys are going to get, even though they've got a little bit of citrus left, I don't think that's enough to keep them for the next three weeks, which is about what we've been looking in on them, is about every three weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a couple pieces of pumpkin. So these are squishy, uh, so they should be able to get into that very easily. So I'm going to actually kind of scrunch this up a little bit more in hopes that I can flatten this out and maybe get it to dry and maybe that would be an additional incentive for the worms to to get over is if it dried out. All right, just picking another couple of things to add to the the pile we're going to keep going. All right. Now, let's move on to the other bin. Okay. So this is bin number two. So this is 203 days old, give or take. And uh, last time we were seeing a lot of cocoons. And we are still seeing a lot of cocoons. And springtails. Oops. Got some breeding worms here, if you're new to the channel. Um, I usually try to show people what it looks like when worms are breeding, if I can catch them. And uh, these two look like they're about ready to finish and give us a cocoon. But I'm going to put them back down so they can finish that process uh, without us peeking at them. So last time, you know, we kind of didn't feed these guys because it was getting very wet. They had some banana left over and we were very interested in uh, getting these guys to uh, not really forage but to I don't take it as long as that uh, like AV or anything but I do try and uh, start migrate them nowadays uh, after a period of you know just letting them finish up their food all right so we're just seeing you know all of the super long-term food like avocado pits avocado shells Sometimes the banana stems. Kind of just flipping through here. This bin uh, is definitely ready to uh, start its path of migration. So I'm going to just start piling up things here, fluffing through. Still got an enormous, enormous amount of springtails in here. But they are helpers, so we are not going to do anything about it. Not going to try and add anything to stop them. Uh, when the season finally gets done, then uh, they will calm down. I, I do tend to see them go in like cycles. And uh, winter time tends to be the time that I see the most of the, uh, the springtails. So we're going to pile this up here, and then we're going to get them some bedding. Okay. So that is bedding that I made specifically for the red wigglers, so that uh, we can keep this species separate to see how differently they behave with certain foods. And uh, since there is no food left, I am really going to try and entice them with three pieces of pumpkin. All right, so kind of flatten this out a little bit. And then we will move on to the next bin. If you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. All right, this is bin number three. This is our middle-aged bin. Got a little sprout coming in here from something. And we're going to flip through this bin and see what it is doing. All right. Pretty dang wet, quite honestly. Um, I think my, my cats have taken care of the mice in the basement. I think I can safely take these and uh, let them have their lids off. But I'm just seeing a ridiculous amount of cocoons in here. Um, you know, so that does kind of lead, you know, to 
the point that the wetter it is, the more they reproduce. And I am like seeing cocoons every single place that I look. So they're definitely going to get the lid to stay off before this gets um, irreversibly mucky. Make sure they get some air in there. The worms are happy. Obviously, you know, they're, they're fine. They're breeding. But I don't need the bin to get so wet that I can't dry it out again when it does come time to harvest. Kind of keep digging here, see if I can find the, uh, the feeding we did last time. Starting to see some kind of citrus right there. Another, another little bit of citrus here. Sometimes these guys skip a feeding and then uh, the next time I give them a pretty good feeding. Over here, oh this is where I think we fed the pita bread. So you can see, I will try and hold this still, but there's a lot of mites on the citrus and you know maybe that's one of the ways that the citrus becomes more edible yeah that's the pita bread uh, becomes more edible for the worms makes it safe is if the other uh, critters in the bin are uh, taking care of it beforehand believe it or not this still smells nice and citrusy you know just it's not a, a rotten smell or anything so it looks like they spent most of their time on the pita bread. I think that was a whole package of pita bread. All right, well, we're going to give them a little bit of food, but we're going to do it on the other side of the bin because I don't think that citrus is enough to keep them going for another three weeks. So we're just going to let that do what it's going to do, and then we will give them some pumpkin on this side. So they will have enough to get them through until we get back to see them next time. If you like this series on the Red Wigglers, I do have a whole playlist for it and I will link that right over there. If you just want to see what happened last time, I'll link that video over there. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.